It has been forever, but it's that time again. You all know the rules. These are all games that are in some way intriguing. They have interesting ideas. They may not all be good, but if you're looking at the latest AAA releases and feeling like you've already played all these a thousand times, or if you just love the medium of games and you want to see it used in some way that you might not have before, this list is for you. On to the games. Cube Escape Theater for years, James has been talking to his friends about building a room escape game that was actually a psychological landscape. He knew he'd never have time for it, but it was something he always wanted to see. And now he has. Give that man a drink. Cube Escape Theater is a surrealist, Twin Peaks-esque room escape game that lets you explore, and hopefully escape, the mind of a man dealing with personal trauma. Welcome to the theater of It's free, it's not long, and it's on mobile, so there's really no reason not to try it if you even vaguely like these types of games. It's your time. Most excitingly, I just found out that the company that makes it has about a half dozen other room escape games that I now have to try. Stellaris. I usually find that 4X space games tend to be strategy games with a sci-fi skin, but Stellaris is a sci-fi game that you happen to strategize in. James loves Stellaris, and you know why? Because it makes him feel like he's part of one of those sprawling space empire epics that he read in his youth. The love of science fiction behind this game is so clear. In Stellaris, you can do all of those things that you always thought would be rad to do in other 4X games, but always got bogged down in the strategy. Want to form a federation? Absolutely, what's stopping you? Want to uplift a species? Go right ahead. Worried about somebody else sparking an interstellar war between organics and machines? You should be, somebody might. The strategic gameplay isn't quite as deep as other Paradox titles, but that's actually what makes it shine. By being just a tiny bit looser on the strategy side, it frees you up as a player to make the cool choices, like pursuing the mystery of the precursor civilizations that came before, or taking time to raise a pre-space civilization to take their rightful place as vassals of your empire, rather than simply always building the clearly numerically best one. If you're looking for a glorious homage to stellar empire sci-fi, I highly recommend Stellaris. Duskers. If we're talking about games that really make you feel like you're living sci-fi, here's a little bit of a harder sci-fi twist. Now, James admits that he is very weird, but he loved the central conceit of this game and the control scheme that rolls out of it. Because let me tell you, this is a game about exploring space hulks using drones that you command through old DOS-style command lines. And while having to move your robot the same way you make your Linux box unzip something may sound a little bit clunky, they've streamlined it enough to make it highly approachable while still leaving you with the feeling of being the last human alive on a spaceship, sitting alone in a control room, piloting your few remaining drones to salvage what you can from long dead husks in order to get you home. The game is basically a puzzle game with roguelike elements. How to search the hulks you find efficiently without any of your drones getting eaten by the things which took those ships down in the first place turns into a brain teaser, punctuated by moments of high action where you try to remember the six different commands you need to run away, close some doors, power up a new generator, and arm a ship's internal defense systems, because you accidentally made the wrong move and now you have a big space baddie chasing your drones. Oops. North. Now, we all know that James likes him some bizarre, low-budget, surreal games, especially if they have an interesting message. We also know that at least one of those makes it onto pretty much every Games You Might Not Have Tried episode, so here is today's. I'm not even going to say anything else about it, just go enjoy North. Warlords Battlecry 3. This game is so good. Okay, maybe good isn't the right word, but th this game's awesome. Before Warcraft 3 came out, the Battlecry games were doing hero-based RTS play, and Warlords 3 is the apogee of the series. Even if it's not as refined as the Blizzard offering, Warlords 3 more than makes up for it with an enormous list of races to play and professions to choose from. What's more, your hero carries experience over between battles, allowing you to craft and grow them over the course of a hundred matches, even in multiplayer. 
Heroes can also bring your most successful units from the previous game with them and deploy them at the beginning of the next fight, so that Minotaur Warrior who just happens to survive the whole match can stride onto the next battlefield as one of the legendary companions of your champion. It's great by itself, but if you've got a few friends to play this with, we highly recommend trying to put together an Iron Man mode league. Super hot. If you haven't already played this one, it is worth looking at simply for the fact that it's one of those rare, truly original designs that comes from mashing two genres together. It's basically a strategy FPS, but not in the way you would think. In Super Hot, time only moves when you do, so if you stop, the world almost freezes, and you can plan out how you're gonna dodge between bullets, melee a guy, shoot another guy, and then throw your gun at a third guy when your clip runs out, all before replaying it in glorious real time. This allows you to set up those incredible movie-like moves that you always wanted to pull off in an FPS but never quite could because the frantic FPS pace simply doesn't let you walk between bullets like Neo does. To me, this game is completely worth picking up simply as an object lesson in what can be done when we get out of the traditional genre headspace. Super. Oxen free. So, what's the, um, what's the, like, thing to do here? Other than obviously go skinny dipping and get murdered by Jason Kruger. Oxenfree is one of those games that you save for a time where you just need to sit inside and play through a story on a rainy day. It's a ghost story. It's a coming of age story. Oh my god, you are annoying. It's a mystery. What? They're your people. You can decide. It's a choose-your-own-adventure with a little bit more of a serious, melancholy bent than those that you may have picked up in the library as a small child. There's little mechanical gameplay here, and at times trekking about on the island of Oxenfree can get a bit tedious, but it's a story that has to be played through, because like Kentucky Route Zero, it's a game about deciding who your character is. Oh, come on, Clarissa. I'm fun. I'm hip. And finally, let's leave off with this tiny gem. Artifact Adventure. Imagine if somebody took Final Fantasy 1 and tried to make Skyrim out of it, then chalked it full, and I mean full, of meaningful choices. That is Artifact Adventure. The gameplay here is straight Final Fantasy 1, but tough. Resources like money are gonna matter a lot, and you're never gonna have quite enough of it. But the exploration is totally open world. You can basically go anywhere from the beginning, and it's absolutely littered with dungeons to explore and secret areas to delve through. The only limit is what areas you can survive. And as far as meaningful choices, they are everywhere. I'm not sure I've seen a game so absolutely jam-packed with choice moments. Not all of them are moral choices, but almost all of them have an impact on the game, and will leave you wondering what would have happened if you chose something else. So if you're looking for a truly open-world Final Fantasy-type adventure, with more choice than you can shake a stick at, look no further. Well, there you have it. Thank you for watching, go enjoy some weird games, and we'll see you next week.